Well, even though you can't go outside, it's getting hot. But your GPU, it doesn't have to. What's good with it? It's your kid, Fold Dookie, back again with Bang. Budget and new gear reviews to help you get the best bang for your tech dollars. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of talking. So, if you're looking to get right into the tutorial, check the time marks here. All right, so now with everybody working from home and spending more time inside, you're probably burning through that backlog of games a little bit like me. I'm currently getting some extra time in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I started to know something. Well, I've been noticing it for a while. My GPU temps were just out of control. Like, realistically, just didn't make any sense. Initially, I thought it was because of my case. As you may have noticed here on this channel, I recently went small form factor. I was using the Ophion Evo M, and it really was the introduction into the small form factor world that I loved. But I was getting some of the issues that you may get with small form factor overheating. Now, a lot of the times it's the CPU because of lack of airflow, but my GPU temps were ridiculous. Constantly in game, I was sitting at about 83 to 84 degrees. For me, I was like, nah, that's not good. Now, the card that was giving me problems was the RTX 2080 that was sent over by Zotac. Now, it's a pretty powerful card pushing graphics at levels that I had never seen before but it was also pushing the temps that I really was uncomfortable with. Now, just to make sure, I did take it out and put in my RTX 2070, the non-super. All right, I just got back in the house for walking the dog, all sweaty and whatnot. It's a beautiful day outside. Let's check what the temperatures are on the RTX 2070 and see if they're still as high as they were with the 2080 super. Now, it's been running about 30, 40 minutes, and it's at a steady 70. The highest is going to 71C. Y'all can see what the issue is. As you can see, the temps that my 2080 were given, sometimes sitting at 83, 84 consistently, and even hitting 85, 86, going up into that red, really just had me uncomfortable. So much that I even switched out my case. I have everything now in the NZXT H5 100. I actually picked this up from a good friend of mine, John's Films. I'm gonna leave a link to his channel down below. So I switched it out thinking I will have more airflow that there's, it's not being choked up against the side panels because I actually switched from the glass side panels to the aluminum side panels for better airflow and that did nothing. Everything instantly was at 84 again. It was so bad that I took the panels off. For most of the time that I've had that case, I've gamed with the panels off and it still would hit 84, 85. Those really high temps, I just couldn't understand. So after switching cases, I noticed it was doing the same thing. I figured something's gotta give. So today, I'm gonna show you three ways that you can calm down your GPU temperatures and keep everything nice and cool, you know, relaxed and chill while you're still getting all that gaming performance. Let's get to it. So the first step is something that I recommend mainly for older cards or ones that you may have picked up on the second hand market, possibly for mining, and that's changing the thermal paste. It's a simple way to possibly shave a few numbers off those thermal temps under load. To get started, you simply need a screwdriver. I'm using this fancy motorized one from Scope Around, but any precision screwdriver with small enough bits will do. You also need a way to clean off the old thermal paste. For that, I like to use these alcohol pads that you could buy for super cheap. I like them because they do the job and don't leave behind a lot of residue. Finally, you need thermal paste. I'm using this MX4 from Arctic, but any thermal paste you get your hands on should be good. First, we remove all the screws on the back. This card has a back plate, so I removed that first, but you don't always have to do that. Simply remove all the screws, remembering which ones go where and separate the shroud from the PCB. If you have an older card with caked on, gunked up thermal paste, you may have to use a slight twist and some more pressure. Next, we simply remove any cables that may be connected. Those should simply lift out and will go back in the same place when we realign the card. Now it's time to clean the thermal paste both from the die and the heat pipes on the cooler. 
I apologize for any cringes that may be caused from seeing a bit of paste left along the side of the die as I was in a rush to get this done. Next, we simply apply a small amount of thermal paste in whatever method you choose, just as long as it doesn't resemble the verge, and realign both sides. Simply reconnect all the cables and take care of those screws and boom, your freshly thermal pasted GPU should be ready to go. That being said, with this card being super new, I really didn't notice any difference, but for an older car, this is definitely the starting point. Now, if you have a fear of opening up your computer, taking out your GPU and disassembling it, then this next step will probably be your starting point, and that's creating a custom fan curve. Now, you can use any software that can control your GPU, but for this, I'll be using MSI Afterburner and Unigen Heaven. Head over to the Afterburner site, links below in the description, and download the install. Same thing for Unigen. Once those are downloaded and installed, open up MSI Afterburner and click on the settings button. Select the second tab labeled fan at the top and click to enable user defined software automatic fan control. Now using this graph, we can set up a custom fan curve that can either keep your fan noise low if you don't mind higher temps or crank up your fans RPMs to keep those temps cooler than a polar bear's toenails. Now each system's temp is going to vary depending on a variety of factors, GPU cooling design, case airflow, and how taxing the game may be on your GPU. Here is the curve I initially set. Notice how I keep the fans low till the temps start to rise, and when they start reaching the previous delta of 84C, they crank up full blast. Now here is a sample of what that sounds like in this case, so you'll have an idea of 100% fan speed is like. Now I usually game with headphones on, so this is less of a bother to me, but if you can't deal with the noise, then adjust accordingly. Once you have an ideal curve, hit apply then OK. Lastly, you'll want to make sure you click this button so that afterburner settings are applied at startup. That way you won't have to manually open the app every time you want to game. Lastly, I'm going to wrongly call this tip undervolting. Folks, sorry to break you here. I'm out here walking the dog, but I just want to come in and quickly apologize for incorrectly using the term undervolting. Even though I say that this is not undervolting, it's far from undervolting. It shouldn't even be associated with it. This is just something I did on my machine to quickly lower the temps and not turn up the fan noise. But definitely pay attention to the next part. I say that because if you want a thorough and exhaustive video on GPU undervolting, let me point you to this magnum opus by Optimum Tech that really shows you the best way to do it for GPUs from both Team Red and Team Green. What I'll be using is the Zoltac Firestorm app that controls my 2080 Super and limiting the GPU temp target to a comfortable range. Now these cars come with what they call Ice Storm 2.0 technology that allows them to stay pretty quiet under load at temps up to 89C with no throttling. But for my own sanity, I don't want my expensive GPU constantly chilling in the fire zone. If you have a Zotac card and ever wanted to know how to change the RGB, well the Firestorm app is good for that as well, so make sure you download it and I'll leave a link down below. Once open, you'll see similar controls to Afterburner or any other GPU controlling program. In fact, you can even set custom fan curves here. What I'm focused on for this tip is on the right side where you see the power percentage and GPU temp target sliders. Now these two sliders are locked together, you can unlock them if you like, but you'll see once we adjust the GPU temp target, it will automatically adjust the power slide accordingly. I set mine comfortably at 81 Celsius temp target and you can see that limits the power to 92%. Hit apply and test in game. Even though I'm allowing less power, I know there's no real perceivable performance loss. If the hit is too massive, either adjust your slider or go in game and maybe adjust your settings accordingly. 
All right, folks, I'm gonna get up out of here. Hopefully those tips help keep your GPU temperatures low and your gaming going strong. Let me know any other ideas or tips that you may have down below in the comments. It's always great when you guys get on community mode and help each other out. All right, I'm gonna get up out of here. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and never forget to holler at your boy.